Hi there, this is Mark Killian here. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we're always learning. This week we are doing something really wicked all the way from my home country, the Kalimba or the Mbira. So let me explain the difference to you. The Mbira is a traditional African instrument that goes back some 3000 years. Originally made, this is an Mbira here, originally made with bamboo tines. You pluck these and they make the sound. These are called tines. They're all metal now, but 3,000 years ago they were bamboo. And then around 1,000-something years ago, you started finding them being metal. A very big explosion occurred you know, around the 17, 1800s in, um, in, in Africa because of the railroads, because a lot of people started working the railroads. And these are actually railroad pins or nails that they used to drive the, um, the rail supporters in, in uh, the rails into the rail supporters. And so people would just take these things and flatten them with a hammer. And that became the tines, which is now sort of widely the way that, you know, widely used in the way they've been made for a, for a very long time now. And just a little word on these tines. It's a very s s common concept um, to have metal tines that resonate. And you and that sound in this case is acoustic. But and for example, my Fender Rhodes piano, those are metal tines, very similar concept. You hit that tine, it vibrates. In that case, it's getting picked up by a pickup, an electroacoustic pickup. Um, so it's, you know, it's a 3,000 year old concept that we still basically use today. This is the Embera, and we're going to get into the nitty gritty of what's in there, but let me go over to the Kalimba. The Kalimba basically is just a westernized version of the Embera. Um, here's a Kalimba. Um, that's still African. This is now a kalimba that's made in America, um, as is this, and, and we'll have a little look at these in a second. Um, but just a bit more context, um, a very famous ethnomusicologist by the name of Hugh Tracy basically followed and studied Mbira music. Um, and Mbira music comes mostly from the southern part of Africa, specifically the Shona people. Uh, in what is now known as Zimbabwe. Um, and that's sort of the epicenter of Mbira music and the development of Mbira. Um, of course, you find it stretches out from there. And you'll find it in Mozambique, you'll find it in South Africa, you'll find it all over. You'll even find it as far north as Nigeria. Um, however, that's sort of grand central for the Mbira. Now, Hugh Tracy studied this and um and then decided in i think it was the if i'm not mistaken the 60s um to develop a kalimba he's the one who came up with the with the and uh, with the original idea of the instrument and so that he could introduce this music that he loved so much to the western world and of course it's taken off like wildfire um there were any number of makers in america who make great kalimbas and of course in south africa it's still an ongoing tradition in southern africa and just a footnote, I actually studied with Hugh's son, Andrew Tracy, who was uh, lecturing at our university, not for very long. I just took a few courses with him and workshops on kalimba music and mimbira music. Um, but I digress. Getting back to what makes these instruments tick. So let's take the mimbira to start. This is not a very good one, so I'm just going to show it to you. You've got three sets. You've got the low set, you've got a medium set and a high set, and it goes low to high, low to high, low to high. So they spread out from the middle. Um, this is my, oops, mic touch. This is my Mbira that I bought in South Africa that um, kind of works a little better, even though I haven't tuned it. So it's horribly out of tune at the moment. Um, but again, it's the same idea. Everything radiating out from the middle, low to high on a low register, low to high on a medium register, low to high on a high register. Oh, and by the way, a hole in the middle there, you stick your finger through, and that's how you hold this thing, like that. 
Um, and traditionally, I don't have a gourd here, but traditionally these are played in a big gourd, in a big shell, like that, about that big, and this fits inside there. And then they play it like that so that you get a bunch of resonance. Okay, so I would highly recommend you go and check out the music of two Zimbabweans, both Mbira players who have made Mbira very popular and have become very well known for Mbira playing. One is Oliver Mtukudzi, um, who sadly just died earlier this year. Um, and the other is Thomas Mapfumo. And both of these guys are from Zimbabwe. Amazing players, unbelievable. Their music is fantastic. Highly recommend you go and check them out. Now, just a little bit about these guys in terms of the bottle shoe, which you're probably wondering why these bottle tops are there. They are just loosely tied on there to provide a rattle. And so when you play it, you get that buzz. Now, someone who can really play this will be very really dexterous with, with the finger, and they play the most amazing patterns and, and cross rhythms. I re recommend you go and check that out on YouTube. So kind of all over the place. I haven't tuned this, but um, but you kind of get the idea there. But difficult to play at this angle. You're usually playing it like this um, inside the gourd. So moving on, we've, I've shown you the two mbiris. The rest, what I have here, are kalimbas. Um, so why do we stay with Africa first? These are this one's a piece of crap. I think one of the tines has fallen out. That's just a toy, basically. Nothing much to that. This is also a similar idea, but it's got a big resonator gourd on it. None of these are in tune. I could tune them if I wasn't so lazy. Um, this one too oops, is also way out of tune. even with a piece of shit that's not in tune you can still make you can make something sound good um this is i seem to remember this being made in thailand fun now let's get to the real stuff okay so i have three three instruments here made by the same people here in america these are very well-made kalimbas they um if you could if you can see they even list the how it should be tuned in the notes and a easy way to tune it you just undo those two screws um and i've been sitting here a little bit trying to tune these guys a little bit um but this this is a very standardized way the tuning for a kalimba works Unlike the Mbira, which is low to, to, to high going from middle to out, this one starts low in the middle, but then goes, so that's A. I'm sorry, this is C, I believe, yeah. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Um, same here, this is also in C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Let me get up close. You'll lose a bit of the sound, but that's okay. So from the middle, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So it goes from the middle, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And that's a very standard kalimba tuning. Um, okay, this one's in D. Oh, okay, I've tuned this one differently now. So this is tuned to a minor. So D, E, F, G, A, B, C. C ish D
Okay, so this guy is a little different in that it's got a resonator box, which is hollow. And I mean, if you can see on the side, there's a hole and on this side, there's a hole. So when you're holding it like this, of course, it's a bit awkward for me to play it like this. You can open the holes up independently of each other and thereby you can adjust the size of the resonating chamber in effect. So could sound like this. fucking remember the name of this company uh, if I do I'm gonna post it up here because they make good stuff um, these two as I say are from the same manufacturer this one even has a lapel to hang around your neck these are fun educational um, and they they do sound good they are good sounding instruments but they lack a little bit that sort of rawness of the African ones that I have here um, but you pay the price for that right so those are difficult to tune and handle these ones are super easy to tune you just undo these two screws and knock the tines in and out it's a bit finicky, but very possible to tune them correctly. Uh, I believe this is, again, the same company. So, yeah, I have four from this company. Um, it's a much bigger one with a gourd. This one's not tuned. Um, this one, going back to an instrument that is from South Africa, this is probably my favorite one here of the African ones. Um, it's got a very bright, beautiful sound. It's got no resonator on it, it's just a plank of wood. So it's a beautiful one. I'm gonna show you an example of this. Um, I used this on a track for my Gravy Street Daisy Confused album. Um, called This We Know in the middle breakdown. So uh, I'm going to play that for you now. It's this instrument and you'll be able to hear it in all, all its glory. This we know. The earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth. This we know. about rhythm you're going to find when you go listen to some of this stuff the way the rhythm works is it's very often a triplet and and cross rhythmic so it's very often so instead of going one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four you're going duck it 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 So that's a very common thing with um, how these are played uh, and as you can hear there the the low is not always on one in fact it's very often just off one or somewhere else um, and so that's how the cross rhythmical aspect of it builds up because the, that one what you'd perceive as the one because it's a low note is never on one uh, a very common thing in African music in general but specifically for Mbira music now getting to the favorite of all my 
um, com well, it's a kalimba. This one, I can tell you what company it is because it's written on the back. Uh, Hokema, H-O-K-E-M-A, Hokema. Um, the difference with what they make, and they have a few different um, varieties that you'll, you'd see on their website, is that they mount the kalimba on a skin. Okay, so this, in this case, it's goat skin, and it's mounted in the middle on a frame. Uh, so, a few advantages to that. One, it's got a great mechanism. This is a very professionally made instrument. Beautiful sound, but the magic with this guy is, check it out. Put it down on the table. Play a note. Pretty dead, huh? Now check this out. See what I'm doing there? I'm just lifting it, keeping one end on the table, but just lifting it up to open that resonating chamber up and to be able to manipulate that. How fucking wicked is that? Yeah, this is just a great fucking instrument. I am so in love with this instrument. Um, I'm going to show you an example here of me making a recording for the Dolores score. Um, so check this out. It, this, it's very simple playing, nothing much to it, but just miking it properly and getting a little bit of that in there. It's just a really nice sound, and you probably would be hard pressed to tell me what instrument that was if you were just listening to, to the CD or whatever. Um, so check that one out from Dolores. So that's about it for this episode. I just want to men mention one more thing in the development of humans and instruments and music and everything. Um, some dude built a monster of these things and it's called an array mbira. Um, the guy's name was Bill Wesley down in San Diego. And basically it's a chromatic version of these. It's totally different to how it's structured in the, in, than these are. It, it, run, it runs, as I understand, around the, the circle of fifths. Um, and the biggest ones are over five octaves, so massive. I mean, five octaves, you're talking, you know, like 150 of these tines. Um, but that's a, a thing, an expensive instrument that I'm trying to procure for myself. So once I manage to find one, or even if I have to borrow one, um, I'm going to get one of those and do a separate episode then because I think it warrants it. Um, it's just a monster machine that. But for kalimbas and beeras and so forth, all of us, bid you farewell. We love you very much. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please like. And put any comments below. Share your experiences with these instruments or anything I may not have touched upon that you'd like to hear or any questions. And we're always learning. Catch you next week. Oh Jesus, please tell me you were fucking recording. Oh, thank Christ. Oh, let me do this again, because that fucking suck. Oh, you fucking dog fuck. Hello? I oh, highly re- I highly- Okay, that's right. Okay, that's right. Whether it's, uh, you know, um... Brain fart. Hello? Try that again. So, so let me do that. What is going on with this dog? Okay, let's try that again. Let me do a pick up here.
the fuck are you doing? Yes. I do love you. Okay, that's a little weird. Okay. I think that's enough. Fuck it. <laughs>